Hello friends, welcome back to another video from Shomu's Biology. In this video, I'm going to talk about Biotechnology Eligibility Test or BET. Okay, earlier it was known as uh, the DBTJRF, Department of Biotechnology Junior Research Fellowship. So basically, the same thing, the same exam, but now with much greater opportunity from, uh, from DBT for the students of biotech field. So if you belong to biotechnology, which is a big chunk of the students coming out every single year, then this exam is just for you to go into the PhD career for your life. So what is BET, Biotechnology Eligibility Test? It's a test conducted by DBT, Department of Biotechnology, Central Government Organization of India. And they conduct this examination for selecting candidates for their PhD programs. And there are plenty of rooms for that, plenty of seats for that. Approximately more than 250 seats, 275 and even more than that seats are available if you get in the list, primary list. And this number of students will be provided with a stipend to do their PhD in any lab of their choice and the rest 100 to 150 students will be provided the stipend PhD program in uh, the DBT funded projects across different uh, labs throughout India. So that's what this exam is all about. So if you qualify this exam and get a good rank at the very beginning for like, like 400, uh, the first 400, 500 candidates, then you'll probably get the chance to do PhD from uh, reputed institutes of India for projects funded by DBT, Department of Biotechnology India, with the help of this uh, particular program. Now, remember this PhD program offered by DBT, it's sponsored by DBT. So basically, this PhD program will run for five years. They will not provide you stipend more than five years. So it's a co-terminatory process. If your PhD is over, your stipend will be over. But by the time frame, you'll get your degree. Now, who are eligible for uh, the DBT biotechnology exam or BET, biotechnology eligibility test? So the eligibility criteria goes like anyone from the field of life sciences or any disciplines of life sciences who have completed uh, the MSc or equivalent degree are eligible for the PET exam. And uh, one more thing regarding the mark statement, you need to score, if you're a general candidate, you need to score more than 60% in your last qualifying examination, that is the MSc or equivalent examination like BTEC or BVSC. MTech, all this examination, you need to score more than 60% in order to be eligible to apply for this exam if you are a general candidate. For uh, SC, ST and OBC, this ratio, this percentage is 55%. Alright, what is the age limit and how many attempts you can take? See, there is no attempt limitations, but there is an age limit limitation. The age limit, uh, maximum age limit for BET examination is 28 years for a general candidate and it's 33 years for SC, ST candidate and 31 years for OBC candidates. All right. What is the amount of stipend you're going to get after qualifying biotechnology eligibility test conducted by DBT? So DBT bet after qualifying offers you similar stipend as any other national level PhD entrance examination like CSI net, UGC net, CSI UGC joint net. So all these cases, they will be offering you 25,000 plus HRA for the first two years and then 28 years, uh, 28,000 plus HRA per month for the rest of the years. So this is how they are going to offer. They also are going to offer some research grant of 30,000 to 50,000 depending upon your project. All right, what is the syllabus for biotechnology eligibility test? I mentioned earlier that this test, although right now is applicable for any individual from the life science interdisciplinary fields, but this is mostly uh, maintained and built for the biotechnology graduates. The reason behind it is the syllabus. If you check the syllabus, the syllabus is based on the biotechnology syllabus. There will be many concepts uh, which will be new for candidates coming in from microbiology, zoology, botany, physiology, biochemistry, molecular biology background. So near about the syllabus similarity is 75 to 80%, 20% of the syllabus will be something new that you need to learn in order to get uh, some good marks and excel and qualify the biotechnology eligibility test. So without any further delay, I'll be showing you the syllabus pattern in my desktop screen. Now I'll show you the syllabus for the DBT JRF, which is known as the BET Biotechnology Eligibility Test Examination conducted by DBT and starts with aptitude syllabus. You know, aptitude, there's no particular syllabus like that. Anything that you know of your IQ, your general science knowledge, your chemistry knowledge, basics chemistry knowledge, basics mathematical knowledge will be tested. So there's nothing in the aptitude portion. Now let's move to the next part. In general biotechnology, the second part of this question paper of this examination, the syllabus goes like biomolecular structure and function. So basically biochemistry, methods in biotechnology, 
technology by, by, by technology techniques like IR spectroscopy CD NMR and all these things organizational structure of function of prokaryotic eukaryotic cell biology cellular processes that is replication transcription translation recombinant DNA technology detailed process genetics phylogeny and evolution that includes uh, Mendelian non Mendelian inheritance classification biology as well as evolutionary biology IPR and biosafety and ethics something is totally new to other candidates but it's there for biotech graduates then part B specialized branches in biotechnology agricultural biotechnology will be something totally different you need to read in details that includes all this you know uh, photosynthesis C3C4 cam pathways plant tissue culture transgenic technologies biotechnology transgenic animal preparation uh, and uh, biotechnology in genetic engineering in, in molecular breeding and all these things molecular breeding and genomics will be there molecular markers will be there biodiversity and conservation will be there okay animal biotechnology including animal physiology and biochemistry histology and embryology uh, then all these things animal parasitology virology immunology pathology all these things will be there and then m tech biotechnology candidates industrial mathematics will be included engineering principles will be included thermodynamics in biological systems bioprocess engineering will be included downstream processing bioprocess plant design will be included and that is particularly for uh, from the m tech biotechnology field okay and then bioinformatics and computational biology will also be there major bioinformatics tools database search sequence analysis structural uh, biology proteins and all these things Environmental biotechnology including pollution, uh, wastewater treatment uh, and pollution control, pollution monitoring, all these things will be there. Marine biotechnology includes marine resource utilization, oceanography, types of marine microbes and their biology, microbial assessment and so many things will be included. Medical biotechnology including vaccinology, immunotechnology, uh, genetics and uh, medical practice, all these things will be included proteomics and how the proteomics is involved with the uh, in the medical practices all these things will be included okay gene therapy and all molecular and human genetics including cell biology and cytogenetics principles of genetics human genome genetic disorders and portion of neuroscience are also there that is neuron glial cells neurophysiology and behavior okay birth and migration of neurons and so many other things related to the neurology and neural science okay pharmaceutical biotechnology like drug metabolism pharmacological screening and assays enzymes and microbial technologies biochemical engineering downstream processing industrial applications of uh, the pharmaceutical biotechnology all these things are there so basically the last portion actually composed of like 15 to 20 percent of the syllabus that will be new to candidates not from biotechnology background particularly the pharmaceutical biotechnology uh, you take new neuroscience you take molecular and, and you take this uh, medical biotechnology uh, you take marine biotechnology you take environmental biotechnology bioinformatics this six seven different topics are something from biomedical biochemical engineering biotechnology engineering and industrial biotechnology perspective which is generally present in m tech syllabus not in the msc syllabus so candidates will be coming from msc or m tech background so if they are coming from m tech background they are going to get all this syllabus common but from from the msc background this syllabus will be new these portions are new so if you are applying with msc remember try to put your degree properly so that if you are applying for msc you are going to get get to see this question from the topics that you know and this topic something new to you so you need to work hard and practice more for preparing this topic pattern of the examination section a will comprise of 50 compulsory multiple choice questions of the plus two level general science mathematics chemistry general aptitude analytical qu uh, quantitative ability general biotechnology and each question carries three marks will be negative marking and for each incorrect answer that is one marks will be deducted from the total marks okay unanswered or attempted questions will be given zero marks so the section one is for general biotechnology general chemistry mathematicals and general ability plus two levels standard section b will comprise of 150 multiple choice questions area of biotechnology and candidate has to attempt 50 questions and each question carries three marks negative marking one marks okay 33 percent negative marking and if you unanswered any question that will be zero marks okay and there will be multiple cities of your choice where you can apply for this examination as an examination center right so i believe i gave you enough information for you to understand what is biotechnology eligibility test and every single year this test is being conducted in the january and february month that's the time 
where they release the forms and all and then they conduct the exam by march april so this time they are conducting is in april so all the very best for this biotechnology eligibility text exam so if you are from biotech background you know what i'm talking about you know the syllabus very well you have prepared it earlier but if you are not from the biotechnology background if you are from any other background than biotechnology then you need to work a little harder because in this case you may need more than 6 months for the preparation but for the final tips what i can say is that for this preparation you need to follow a clean idea and and rule of preparation for any other uh, any other kind of phd entrance examination in india if you want to attend and that starts with understanding the exam which starts with this video so understand the exam the second thing that is very important is knowing the syllabus which i already shared so go through the syllabus and the third thing is check the previous years question papers very very important you will find plenty of books in the market offering 10 years 15 years of uh, question papers of uh, dbt grf or biotechnology gate examination so you can get those papers and those will be good for you so this three things are the start and backbone of your preparation why because you'll see the question paper try to find out uh, the questions the ask from which topics which chapters more or less so build a uh, you know map with that and then based on those chapters go back to the syllabus mark those chapters and now after marking these chapters go through those chapters and prepare those topics which are highlighted because they have asked more question in past 10 years for that so that's the way to prepare because you know if you cannot prepare everything from a to z you can go with this suggestive approach and remember do not skip a topic completely rather than that go with this systemic approach where you read some portion of the topic but do not leave it completely because sometimes you know leaving a topic leads to uh, you know sometimes they may ask question many number of question from one topic so leaving that com topic completely may result in less marks in the examination so that's something that you need to keep in mind and another thing is that study from good peer reviewed books that includes many different books that includes uh, the biochemistry from leninger cell biology from carp you can read or cell biology from uh, lodish you can read then you can go with the molecular biology of gene uh, for the molecular genetics part and doran's book is very very important is going to be very handy if you are from biotech background or not biotech background doran's book for uh, the fermentation technology part and bioprocessing engineering part is going to be the boon because this is something that is new to candidates coming in from other disciplines rather than biotechnology so prepare that part very well prepare computational biology part very well but informatics part will be new to you so those portions will be new to you so if you are not from the biotech background coming from different background then mark the topics which you haven't prepared earlier like biotechnology portions uh, i mean uh, the the bioinformatics portions uh, the enzyme uh, technology or the bioprocessing engineering portion or agricultural biotechnology portion bioethics i uh, those portions so these four five sections are there which is completely new to you so this new section you keep it separated the rest of the se sections you keep separated and you prepare both together the new portions at the very beginning of your preparation because you have more time during that time but once you reach the last two months of preparation like in the january or february month of the preparation you need to wrap it up you need to revise it very well you need to revise it wisely and again revise it based on that uh, that map that you prepared the most important topics that you found so these things will take time you know these days students don't want to do all these things they just want to join a coaching and the coaching will supply them everything and they just want to mug and they want to qualify but that's not the good way to go so best thing is that you always need to put some work into it remember if you don't work hard or if you don't invest time you're not going to get return out of time time will teach you many things so the more time you'll invest into something the better results you are going to get from it and obviously we are not telling you that uh, you know this ground work you know a, a coaching for example if you join us or any other coaching so we'll provide you the details regarding our heat map and everything this is important this is not but while you try to search it yourself you learn so many new things so many things that will make your understanding even concrete and better so remember that that's the final tips for the biotechnology eligibility test which is about to conduct in uh, a week or so so all the very best for biotechnology eligibility test to everyone and i believe this video is going to help you if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future thank you bye